If I have to go eat acid to try to enjoy it, then you have to eat it. I will. All of it. All, all of, of it. You don't have it all. Mine. If I had anyway. a little more to give you, I would. I just I don't want to hear anybody else being in. No, I judge. No, it's not <laughs> Heavy as fuck. Heavy as fuck. Backwards hats and death shit. Metal. Like technical death core. This week on Non Judge Metal, Slayer kills it on the Tonight Show. Some new releases that are harder than a coffin nail in our current metal homework. I'm here, James McGruff, with Huff. Nick and Leo. Right on. How are you guys doing this week? Man, not too bad. Volumes, still in the fucking playlist. I can't help it. Like, that's all I'm listening to anymore. That's what we were talking about right. uh, as far as like uh, your metal homework this week. Man, you got really sucked into that volumes, it's, which is understandable. They're all so good. It seems like both albums, I haven't found like any any like two or three tracks where I got to skip those two to get to the next one that I need to get. I haven't found anything that's like really skip worthy. Yeah, I... I, I could try to give you a contrarian opinion on that. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've listened to that album like twice this week in its entirety, the newest one. Uh, I went back and listened to uh, the, the one before. I can't remember if that's Sleeper or, or which one. But um, I like that, man. They're just definitely uh, definitely one of those guys that I feel like are going to cement themselves right. in and, and stay around for a long time. Just some of the rhythms, it felt like it seriously it picked me up. Like that Kill Switch Engage and the Heartache. The that energy. Did. Back in like 2002 or three or whatever it was, when that shit came on, I just remember hearing it the first time and like I got up out of my chair and I was like, Leo, let's go fucking do something because this metal is made for that. Got like, I me fucking hyped. Yeah. Totally. No Sleep. No Sleep was the album for volume. No That's sleep the one that volumes. opens with the mixture we were talking about. Laura. The mixture probably. probably like that song no Erased sleep. on there too, man. Nothing but volumes. <laughs> well, no, it, it actually uh, got me talking. He was talking about the energy of it. Which uh, brought me into talking about, did you guys see the Slayer performance? Absolutely. I didn't watch it live. Phenomenal. But I, I got it Friday morning now. I told everybody, like, everybody relax. They're going to be on there. But you know it's going to be on YouTube the next morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. 35 years those guys are still killing it, man. And uh, we actually had a, a friend of the show, um, uh, we we'll call him Bubba. Uh, me and uh, Leo here know him that uh, went to Slayer last week. Mm -hmm. Went and saw them, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. and Behemoth, and uh, he uh, he definitely might be coming in and talking about nice. some of that too. But yes, Slayer man, till this day, still kill it. Did he join the congregation? Huh, I'm sure. Sorry, I'm I don't sorry. know. He, he was there watching Behemoth. Might as well. I mean, what do you do? What do you do? With I don't. I'm not sure. It was Kelly's backstage tavern. Those bikers came up to us bald and big tats and big fucking gauged ears and shit and they're like you need to join the congregation to change my life and <laughs> so upside down cross on it and talking about how 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 fucking rotten everything is and i was like dude you know cliff you owe me fucking 20 dollars because it is a cult it is a cult i told you i told you think about it walk with me in hell choke on your own words but i think i mean they might have formed a cult around it that doesn't mean that that was their original goal you know what I'm saying? Ashes of the wake. You know what I'm saying? See, see who gives a fuck. Basically. <laughs> I, like, I, I think, um, going back to that Slayer performance. One more time. Slayer performance. No, like I said, I think going back to it, uh, what, what, what I found so cool about it was that after 35 years, those guys are still tearing it up, especially after, you know, losing one of their founding members, you know, just a few short years ago. Who did they lose? I don't know. Jeff sure. Hanneman passed. Is that the bassist? I know he was, uh, the guitarist. The lead guitar? No. No rhythm. No, no, no. Is the, the the lead singer is the lead guitar? Uh, no, no he's uh, Tom, yeah, he's bass player. Bassist. Bass player. And then you got Kerry King and he's the lead, and, uh, King's the lead guitar. Right. But Jeff Hanneman helped write a lot of the Slayer songs. Okay. Now they have uh, Gary Holt, uh, I believe, X Exodus okay. uh, on there, man. And, um, and I've heard nothing but good things. And uh, they they did that album Repentless. Right. So I mean that like they're still out there killing it. Uh, they, recently there was an interview with uh, Tom where he was talking about how. They, they don't know what they're going to do forward going because him and Carrie still have some things to work out with right. uh, you know the bands. Um, you know, I, I was supposed to do aspect. homework on Slayer. It seems like, but after watching it on the the, the the Tonight Show, 
Hey, man, man, you stayed up late, you know. Man, like, that like that it's, it's just so crazy how that that fucking metal still moves you, still grabs you, pulls you from even inside the TV, and then you. Oh man, you know it's real. I can't listen to uh, Seasons in the Abyss without feeling like you know, like a, like an angry teenager again. Right. I start like I just get that 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 angst and it that kind like, of makes you want to kick something over. Yeah, I just want to start knocking shit over and beating on signs and smashing mailboxes with bats and not not that I've ever done anything like that. Right. I know it's not. It was suicidal tendencies kind of within my mindset when I was younger and whatnot. Just I'm I'm not on drugs. Dad, I'm not on drugs. I'm gonna tell you, but. Have we heard anything back from the angry Gordon? Uh, the angry this week, man, unfortunately couldn't be with us. Um, just uh, we had some time constraint issues, right. but look to see him very soon. Awesome! I just and, uh, double checking. And man, he's always constantly doing metal homework. Right. I can um, I can definitely confer with him and, and anything he's picked up this week. I'll post on the uh, uh, on the on the Facebook so awesome. anybody listening can can Looking check out what his it. metal homework is. Absolutely. Speaking of metal this week. We got some new releases coming, man. Uh, this week, particularly. Before we get into those releases, can I just say something? Because Absolutely. we were talking about Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys heard about Ronnie James Dio? Oh, the the, the going, hologram oh, tour. The hologram tour, dude. We rock. That was one of my favorite. That and Holy Diver. I feel honestly. like they need to make him like sixty foot tall. And put and the horns. Buildings. You have oh, to put yeah. the horns on Dio himself because it was his mom, dude. That got him to do it. He's still touring and playing metal after death. How fucking metal is that? Like a rainbow in the dark. That's as metal as you get. Right there. uh, To me, that is like the metal. Maybe he told the future in that song. Because what do you think a hologram is? It's just a rainbow in the dark. That's weird. Maybe. I I was going to say that. It's just a rainbow. I thought it was a song. It's a a song. It is a song. It's off off that album, man. Obviously, I got all these other fucking songs and titles and shit, but like, apparently... It's hard to keep up. It is. Great music video. Yeah. Very great. Yeah, man. uh, I recommend checking out Rainbow in the Dark. It's one of those those songs that will stick with you. Right. One of those like old school metal songs that will just hang with you. You have dreams about it. Oh, yeah. Consistently. I I still have them. I know I woke up Monday morning and saw that on Google News that like Ronnie James fucking Dio is going on tour, Hollygarn status. Just like I think it was Tupac or Michael Jackson. Somebody else did Michael it first. Jackson. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I'm just happy metal. Got somebody. Who's next? Who's next? You think Jimmy? You think Jim? Morrison's like, I don't know because maybe that's not metal. I don't know. Well, no, no, no. Who's the next hologram? Not metal, but I mean, you're definitely, you're struggling a point. Like, what, what, what's next? Who are they going to do? You know I mean? Anybody can pass on, and apparently, like, there's a way to, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 at the Jimmy. same time, as we say that, I would hate to see Dimebag Darrow up on stage in a hologram. Well, no, he was. I'd, I was about to God, say, dude, dude, I'd be fucking furious. Him. What that, if he was still that, rocking and rolling and because shit? There's only, because there's only one God man that plays like Dime. We didn't get to see him. Unfortunately, that I'm going to watch him tear a liquor bottle up and it just fall through him what on the if they floor were able right to do through that? the hologram. I don't, I don't want to see that. If they were able to do that, I think that might be worth the price of admission. I mean, if he can't get. A hologram can't get drunk and wail like Diamond Dimebag Daryl did. And even if can't they do did, it, I think that would be depressing as shit for Vinny to be playing on stage with a reenacted hologram of his brother. How much you want to bet if it was a reenacted hologram, Vinny got better things to do, really? Because honestly, that's not a real well, he won't concert. Even do, he won't even do a reunion. They, they've already stated that. Like, I mean, but which I understand as much as it pains me because I, I would love for no generations point in of doing people. A reunion. Was it no because point. Of Dion? But, no, 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 no. Um, I, I'm sure that, that you know it, it's well known that there's been public issues, or, or you know, mm-hmm. him and Phil haven't spoken. That that whole deal. I don't, I don't have to retread that. But he he said something that made sense, and he was just like, "Look, I'm in a new band, and damage plan." No, no, damage plan was the one they were in when when Dion shot. Yeah. No, they, I'm talking about now. Now, hell yeah, the hell band yeah. Hell yeah, with, with uh, Mudvayne. Yeah, with Chad Gray from Mudvayne. Uh, Chad Gray. I don't mm-hmm. know his name. And uh, guitarist from nothing. Nice Nothing. Fuck. Face, yeah. I at least one I met. Yeah. Um. Oh God, I love Nothing Face, man. And to hear, and, and, and I don't know if you guys know, do you know their singer passed away this year, Matt Holt? And he passed That's away the singer for Nothing Face. Face. It's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely. Terrible. I've seen them open for Pantera. So, but going back to what I said, Vinny, uh, Vinny Paul said something to the tune. He was like, you know, it's it's kind of like playing with Pantera now. It's kind of like seeing and spending time with your ex girlfriend. It's, oh, it's just not Lord. comfortable. You know, it's just not something you really. I look forward to doing. And I can understand it. And me and my friends had this debate because we were sense. like, if they, it does, 
If we ever did, if they ever did do that tour, though, and I've debated with them because I don't think anybody could play like like Dime played, and I'm not a like I'm not a, you know guitarist mm-hmm. technically by any means, but uh, I'll say, man, I'd love to see Zach Wild do it just because how close they were. Here we go. And Another I feel like ideas. I feel like he could put a good energy with that, but um, yeah, it's not something he's, that's ever gonna happen. He's too so. busy playing for Ozzy. Maybe. Maybe. Who cares? Yeah. I'm sure to get on stage and do Pantera show, he would he would do it. Uh, no. I'm almost 100 percent positive Zach Wild would. Would do that on it. Would do it. Yeah, exactly. So he's that metal. Honestly, yeah. when it comes down to it, yeah. dude, Zach Wild. Uh, I'll tell you what. I like him. I'm not a f- big fan of Black Label. Just not really been into that type of groove. Like I, I, I dig it, but it's not. I, it's not motorhead type so shit. I love. No, I love old school motorhead, man. Let me. Let me. Is that like. not what like? What about, what about in this river? Well, that was I mean, on. That was on it's United heartfelt. album. It's heartfelt, man. Wasn't that heartfelt. on United? I don't know because, like I, mean, I said, I'm I don't listen to a lot of black. I listen to In This River because it's a tribute to Dime, and I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I'm Pantera for life, man. That Double was a from hell. that was a really nice ballad. In fact, somebody. actually, this week I've been listening to a ton of Pantera. I don't know. I got on a, that. Was, my metal homework this week is just to go back and listen to things that I've kind of just haven't really touched in a while. Like, kind of uh, finding that almost. Man, and you know what? I found myself listening to a lot. Me and Leo here were talking about that? earlier um, before you got in the room. Dude, I went back and jammed the entirety of the first two Soulfly records for the past few days, man. Are you, are you gearing up for them? And oh, I'm going Canvas to see course? it easily. Nice easily, shit. am I going to go see Soulfly? Right. Like I've seen them before. Max Cavalera is a beast on stage, man. I think there's after party tickets for like ten or twenty dollars, where like the band's going to be in there after the festival. Some of the band members are going to be in there. You can actually be meet and greet. Oh, well, Some I need to go into debt because I want to get a picture of me and Max. Cavalera. No doubt, I'm saying extra twenty dollars after paying maybe forty or fifty to get in. The twenty dollars to get to the after stage, like after show, backstage. That I'm, I'm definitely going to check into that because that's something. I'm Did you know that do. it's at the Phase Two tour ground tour grounds? I haven't been there. I've been to Phase 2 to see Seven Dust do the uh, Bonfires and Time Travelers. I would have loved to have seen that. I've seen them three times. I've never seen their acoustic set, man. But, oh. like, if, you, if you've ever seen, if you want to see a metal band that embodies, like, uh, like when I saw them, man, they, they almost felt like glam rock. Like, How they long were ago? so. Uh, well, I, saw about Seven them, Dust, right? I saw them. Tw- I saw them three times. I saw them twice in 2004, or t- 2004, 2005 at the Norva. With Il Nino and Element Eighty, mm. and uh, great name. Yeah, don't Element live 80. up to it though. The mm. first album was good for what it was at the time, but after that, they fought. They just kind of fell off. Like that, I, I, they, they. I don't feel like they stayed quality, and it's not like it's not like a great record. I'm not gonna say it's one of the top ones, but it was fun for for my age at the time. I actually picked it up again recently and listened to it because it was. Uh, I was checking out some of the old stuff right. I had in my my list and. I think this got it uh, on CD. I think one of these weeks we got to do a challenge Absolutely. and see who, what band can actually give you the most, I guess, evolutionary, but not really, like continuously improving albums up to the point where it's like even their fucking seventh album was like up to par. Between the Barry to me. It might be. Between the I've, I've, Is that it? That that, to be. me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, between the Barry to me, I don't think they've ever put out a bad record. <sighs> All right. I think I'm, Pantera never put out a bad record. I mean, once they sure, got to fill I, was gonna say, you sure I know those earlier okay. albums aren't hey. liked by a lot of like their fans hey. from like the Cowboys from Hell era and right. up. But I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't think from Cowboys to uh, to a Reinvent and Steel they put out a bad record. No. Right. Do we include like Love and Peace, dude, with Corn shit? Just because that was like their first albums and stuff, right? No, no, no. no. Oh, you're talking about the LAPD stuff? The LAPD didn't have Jonathan Davis. Okay. No, no. Forget so it that. wasn't the same incarnation of the band. That's like, why. That, that's like, because what was Jonathan Davis's uh, group? I don't know. It was, it was something kind of ridiculous. Ever. It was, uh... I don't give a fuck. I know, everybody was a huge, I know I was a huge fan of Korn, and then I listened to their original demos for the songs that were on the first album, and I was like, man, these, these are really bad without... Producer and right. someone like I, in my opinion, man, I don't know if you've ever heard the demo songs of like Blind and stuff like that that came before the original album. Not good. Well, yeah, that's because people quite all, like when we were talking about doing a lot of like you know engineering and mastering and stuff like that. If you're trying to get serious with the music, if we were to record something here, we can get the tracks, right. we can get the song layout how we want it to sound. But if we want to actually get it mass produced and put it out there you gotta send it to a mastery engineer I'm gonna tell you right now though there was like the demo version of Leech on a three dollar bill y'all wasn't it yeah like that right there I think that sounded 
so raw and rugged and whatnot. That well, almost, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual uh, songs themselves, like Blind. Right, right. Uh, if I remember right, it's like like about a minute and a half or two minutes longer, and it just has unnecessary, uh, to what sounded to me as unnecessary yeah, parts. that's so, what the producers... And, yeah, and that's the, what producer. you know, the producers make that... Uh, they try. Like, yeah, cut I mean, it short, a cut it about a minute longer. No. You know. Yeah, you know. This is all great right I guys. felt like somebody made it listenable, but... Oh, yeah, back to... Um, let's get back. So, so the Metal Homework Man, I got right. back into the Soulfly, you know, prepare for them coming. And they're playing, uh, from what I understand, it's the entirety of the first Nail Bomb album. Or the Nail Bomb album Point Blank, right. which was I was a huge fan of that when I was younger. It was like a collaboration record with Max Cavalier and another artist. Yeah, l- I, I recommend looking it up. It will explain a lot more than I can. I can almost guarantee that's going to be in the Metal Mentions this week. And definitely, I would like it to be Metal right Mentions on. Nail Bomb Point Blank, Nail uh, bomb. which got me looking listening to some um, Sepultura. Man, I check. I, I went back and listened to Arise and. Nice. And uh, Chaos AD, and, and I even pop Roots in just because, man, to me, some of those albums stand the test of time, and I was, you know, I was a big fan growing up. Um, but then eventually I had to get into some. Uh, what about Nitro? Are we going to talk about Nitro? What do you mean? Nitro, they're coming back or not? Elder Adler, he was on a YouTube video, and it seemed like it came out like a week and a half ago. Nitro's coming back? I haven't heard about it. You're that. shitting me. Angry Gordon. I'm gonna look. He sent me a link to it, and I was like, "Is is this news?" And then I looked into it. I don't think it's a fucking joke, guy. And like, as soon as I saw the Elder Adler, you know, what I'm talking about the drummer. He's oh, the God. He, yeah, but he's the drummer for Nitro. Apparently, they used to be a band back on Assumption yeah, Street. Yeah, Chris Adler. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding? I didn't know this. But yet, if they're gonna fucking remake an album, I'm sorry, I'm that much of a fan of Lamb of God. I probably get it. And yeah. he's downloaded or Oh, actually, hit. yeah, right here. They broke up in 93 with a number of previously unreleased demo recordings. Uh, in late 2016, they announced that um, it looks like Jim Gillette and Michael Batian, I believe. Right. Say, were set to reform the band with Lamb of God drummer Chris Adler added to the group's um, the outer. lineup, along with bassist Victor Wooten. Sign me up. And produce. Really? Oh, yeah. Right? Automatically. Are you so, kidding yeah, me? I'm not no, I'm kidding. Not. It says it Dude, right here. This, on the this might soon. be insane. Right here on the online. I, yeah. I read it. It's got to be true. I got uh, that. And apparently they're recording Miracle for an upcoming uh, uh, material for an upcoming third studio album. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, you know, you put, you put uh, Chris Allen and Victor Wooten and I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm there to rock out. That's just crazy. I don't know if y'all, either one of y'all seen it because I know me and, I have me not. and Leo have been fans of I, the no, Elders. I did not see that. I did that, man. So. Awesome. What's oh, next, though? Always good news. Well, I was going to talk about some new releases that came this week, man. Um, some cool stuff that I checked out. Uh, uh, I was talking about Bubba earlier. He had uh, turned me on to a band. Just put out, a, I believe this is their third record, man, called Byzantine. Byzantine. Album's called the uh, Cicada Tree. Um, came out on the 28th. Uh, it's groove metal. They're from Charlton, West Virginia. Uh, it's off Metal Blade Records, man. And it's like, it's just, man, to me, it just had that. that it, it, it's some of the most flowing grooves, man. I just, I, I turned that record on just expecting to hear, you right. know, like, just, you hear groove metal and right. you kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure exactly what you said. It sounded like the record name was a Acacia Strain. No, what? the Cercata Tree. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of close. It kind of does it look like that on the CD cover? <laughs> Are they trying to get people to make? No, I mean this is their third record. They've okay. been around. Okay. The, these this is not a new band. They've been around. I just they, they're one that skipped me. I'm gonna but, go ahead and bring up the the other band that we noticed that was around for the last three or four years. Rings of Saturn. Yeah, that's another new what release this fuck? week, man. Heavy as fuck. Heavy, heavy as fuck. As fuck. Backwards hats and death shit. Metal, like, technical deathcore. Absolutely. I would, I would compare death it to Oceano, but I got some bad looks when I said that. Just because maybe it's not like Oceano, but it feels like that rhythm from the the the, the guitarist and the rhythm guitarist and the drummer. I don't know. It puts you in that that that. Eargasm space where it's just like it don't really matter what the lyricist is saying. I, I noticed immediately when I turned on the Rings of Saturn and tried out this new track because I've I'd heard them before. I heard them a few years ago off right. their first record and uh, yeah, I remember liking it then. Um, and uh, I heard a little bit off their second one and I dug it. I, no, actually, the first album I had, I had that one. Uh, a buddy of mine gave it to me. Um, and I, I remember this thing. I was like, this shit's heavy. Like it's just right. heavy, but it's. You know, it do, it has that. It, it's it's fast. It's different. It's not that standard. Like, cause I know that a lot of people like to pick on deathcore and say there's right. just so much generic deathcore out there. 
this is not that. Like, not to me at least. You know, I mean, it changed it my mind my about attention. that. But this new record, dude, I think it's going to do the same damn thing because I turned that song on the day and it was just like, oh. But have you ever heard that White Chapel, The Saw is the Law? That doesn't sound so. like old White Chapel, though, but it's weird because it's almost like a, a more melodic and less, like, fucking constant White Chapel feel to it. Like, I don't know. I tend to jam that song out when it comes on because The Saw is the Law. No? I. I. Not familiar? I'm no, sorry. I'm Go not ahead. familiar with it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We can cut this up. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? You know about Saw is the Law, motherfucker. Do I? Where we come from, the song. Yeah, okay, the okay, line. I do. I'm sorry, I was dug into Who this. White Chapel. Oh, remember, it's like yeah, a different yeah. sound though, because not like Impaler or any of that shit. It's like it's just. Yeah, like I blinked for a minute. I was, I was, I was studying this list now because I'm telling you that Rings of Saturn just has my ass kicked. Like uh, it, it absolutely that Rings of Saturn just kicked my ass this right. week. Like uh, I definitely could. And then uh, finally, man, this uh, um, I think it is the third album from Make Them Suffer. It's called Worlds Apart. Mm. And we checked that out. It's a... Uh, they have it listed as symphonic deathcore. I guess it's because they put the... Uh, they have like the, key, the keyboard and the synth yeah. and stuff in it. Uh, they're from Australia, man. And that thing... That, that record, to me, was just on the same par as that Rings of Saturn because it was just heavy and it right. flowed. And I Is just, it on like Born of Osiris level? Just, oh. I mean, I, I don't know. I think Born of Osiris, to me, kind of are their own thing. Like, right, uh, right, right. Like, th they're... There's definitely going to be bands that sound like that, you know, that kind of ha like you could you you could put them next to each other and maybe. I thought they always did the synth the best as far as in metal. I really think that they work well right. with how it flows with it, mm -hmm. but I think these guys are right on par with right it. Right on, uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, I believe that I'd heard them before, you know, on the satellite radio, but I, I, I don't think that I've ever sat down and listened to a record. Mm -hmm. That's going to change with this one. There you go. It's getting an Amazon uh, purchase uh, probably today. Like, I, dude, awesome. I really like it. That's serious. That's yeah, a that's fucking serious. big shot so right there. He's going to get I don't it. even want to wait on the ship, and I'm just going to no MP3 way. download. Right to the right to the digital library. Someone gruff does it. Other than that, man, like I can't think. Oh, oh we're talking about new releases of metal, and I'm gonna skip right over. Uh, since the '70s, you can't you can't just skip over for the fucking legend. Alice Cooper put out a new album this week with Paranormal. Hey, maybe, not, it, to you, maybe not to you, man. Maybe not to you, but it's metal. It's it metal. Is. Shock rock. I had to listen to a lot of Marilyn Manson. A little bit of the guy, and I don't hate him. <laughs> There's only one I saw. I used to thought it was the fight song. It's not the fight song. I don't like the fight song. I like God, guns, and government. But you wouldn't be able to like that song if it weren't for artists like Alice Cooper and them Maybe. pushing that I thing. Know. I mean, it's you got just, black metalers out there painting their face up with the crosses, and they they've been doing that, you know, since the '80s. Alice Cooper came out in the '70s doing that, man, and he did it with you know a theme of the horror. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it gives you right. know, it gave Rob Zombie and his his fandom the inspiration. Uh, so. Uh, there's Without a, us having to like it, which I do like right. some Alice Cooper, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. I uh, shit all over it, I guess. I hey, know. man, if you want, you gotta be judgmental. Be judgmental. Everybody oh. has it, so we just, yeah. If I'm gonna shit on it, I just want to say I've seen Alice Cooper in some movies before, like where he played like a special actor or some shit. Oh, yeah. Always, and, always and funny. Funny, but fucking the movies were awful <laughs> enough. To he just happens like, to no. Wait, 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 wait. He was in Wayne's World. Oh, he was in yeah, Wayne's World, so God, if we're it. talking, if you're going to talk right. about awful movies, that one has to be omitted from that list, because I don't care what world we live in, Wayne's World's not fucking awful. Which one? First, Excellent. I like both of them. Yeah. I don't care anyway, shit. I don't They're know if, which was best, though. Like, yeah, well, if you first had to pick one of the first. I thought second. Well, I, I'm just saying the the one, one that had the Indian, and the cry, and shit? Oh, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to poop on either one. They're right. both great, you know? I think we just got sidetracked and we'll be right back. Yeah, it's man. It's non metal. Yeah, yeah, sorry, guys. Right. Gotta go up. Wayne, bro. We got it on DVD. I think I got the date. You gotta check out that new thing, Jake. Absolutely. That's already Absolutely. on my agenda, but I'm telling you right now. I'm sorry. Tune in next week to find out what was on his mind right yeah. now. <laughs> Tell him, man. Non Judge Metal Podcast. This All right, we're back with Alice Cooper. Uh, anyway, yeah, Paranormal came out this week. Um, Alice Cooper's still putting out records, and according to what the reviews are saying, the last few records have been pretty good, and this one's no different, man. He's still putting out consistent music for his theme. And I imagine over a career that's spanning 40 years doing shock rock, that, you know, you got to be a pretty good creative to right. pull that off. So, 
I mean, you know, they whether the you original love band. it or hate it. Do they have know? the original band? And like, they got new people? That, that I better? don't know. I believe Alice Cooper is Alice Cooper. Right. So I think that... Like I, I, I believe, if I, if, if, without doing any research, I'm going to assume that mm. he probably has people that he prefers to play with them. And the, but I, I imagine it's a lot of touring musicians. Right. Now that's no knowledge on the subject whatsoever. But I've you contact us if you know something about. Yeah, if, his, yeah. His feel tour. free. Yeah, you know, right. correct me if I'm wrong on it. I'm just I imagine he could be one of those guys who could hire touring musicians. And I'm not saying the music's simple right. or anything like that. But you know, I, I just don't I don't know for a fact. Right. I, but I, I believe when it comes to Alice Cooper, that's all you really need. Right. I mean, he he is the name and the brand behind it. Right. And just kudos to it, man. For 40 years, he's been passing. You know. We may not like it, or you may not like it, but quality metal to a mass of people, man. He still sells shows and sells right. tickets and does live uh, events. So I mean, that's that's incredible. And forty years of metal is nothing to laugh at. Right. So I'm actually going to give a single applause to Alex Cooper this week for such his long and industrious career, man. And congratulations, releasing a new album right, right. along heaviness of such as Rings of Saturn and Make Him Suffer. Rings of Saturn and Make Them Suffer. Prong also released a new album this week, uh, week called Zero Days. Um, it's uh, Prong. Prong's a thrash metal band. have been around for about twenty, uh, about 19, thirty years now. Seventy nine, I thought, right? Uh, I don't know exactly Prong's right. day, and unfortunately, I didn't get time to check out this new um, new record on this. Right. And I wish I could have because uh, I was a big fan of it. I got to hear one track, and it kind of sounded to me like of a little bit more metal version of CKY. So. If it sounds like your thing, man, definitely give it a shot. Can't um, kill yourself. Uh, yeah. I was just making sure there's not. Yeah, same thing. band. Okay, forgive me. But they have a new song out. Um, you can check it out. It's called Divide and Conquer. I'm gonna check it out because mm. I think that uh, I, I thought it sounded pretty good from what I heard. But as far as the rest of the record, haven't got a chance to. Uh, you might remember. You remember that song? Um, we used to listen to a band. I don't know if a lot. It was during the new metal era, early 2000s. Dry Kill Logic. Oh yeah. Yeah, remember Dry Kill Logic. Yeah, you, you know song. exactly. Good night. Yeah, you know exactly. Good night. Love this. Song. They covered a, a, a prong song. Snap your finger, snap your neck. I remember. I don't. That remember. was prong. Prong wrote yeah. that. That they were the original writers of that. I seen so that these on guys are ball probably like ten years ago. Yeah. I remember when it was on. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? Snap your finger, snap your neck. It's got a great rhythm to right. it. So. so definitely look that up. But that's shit. pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, as far as that man, that's a uh, that's pretty much like the big uh, releases this week. There's some other stuff um, out there. Uh, you know, because metal's being released all over, right. but those are the major releases. Um, I'll, I'll post a small list of uh, the honorable mentions on the uh, Facebook. I believe it was Drug Monday Western. though, after the Ronnie James Dio thing came in to me. I do remember starting up. I just looked on the playlist that I had on YouTube, uh, the Non Judge Metal YouTube page, right? Yeah. And I went ahead and put on Textures. I want to say it was the third or fourth album, Textures. It's different. But it's not what you expect, I believe. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not Meshuggah gent shit, but it's got more, I think, more melody. They've been around for a while. Yeah, I think there's like I eight re- albums, though. I I'm remember sure. hitting them up a think, long time ago, back um, I hit the 2001 album, 2008 I think. is when I first, I, give me two seconds here and I can tell you. Silhouettes, that's okay. the album I picked up by Texas. Right. Because I remember really enjoying, I heard the song Awake on it, mm. uh, and it, it, uh, it actually. I started it up and I didn't cut it off. Got me into it. You know, so as, as far as metal homework, man, I don't have a report on the entire album, but I will say textures. Fourth album, third album, I'm not sure, but it was great. That's your well. There you go. There's your metal homework for the week. It's definitely check out. Some it more in now, this man. week. Can't help it. No, uh, well, the third album was Silhouette, so they have five okay. records. So that's the one. It's a. Uh, that might be why it stuck out. Yeah. Okay, that's probably yeah. why it stuck out to me. If that's your Check favorite. Check out the third song record on that album, dude. I didn't cut it out. Killer. I mean, killer. Killer. Just continued to play and like, it reminded me back when like albums you put them in and you don't turn it until it might be track nine and it was just because it's like the, the interlude to track 10 or some shit like that. Those were good albums back in the day where you got like maybe 14 tracks, 16, I don't know. But... Between the Baron and me, only, they only need nine to give you everything you want within Not it. even that, man. Like, they don't even need that. They, they released an EP that was right. like 35 minutes long. It has three songs on it. Like, like they they don't have... They, well, I, that's one of the things I love about them is I don't feel like they're restricted by, you know, regular... I guess, like, you, what, well, I guess most people consider standards. Like, I've heard people tell me, they got songs too long. It's like eight minutes. I'm like, well, I've enjoyed all eight minutes of it, right. and it's progressively got better, so I don't... I can't, I can't see why you would complain about that at all. That little trio um, piece that he wrote better not be like, you know, the Temple, the Savior, and White Knight. 
<laughs> because like I've got an idea in my head, but at the same time, no, no, no. Like it's but no, they, they like yeah, because they released a, it's the EP, the Parallax, um, Hypersleep Dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came out in 2011, and it's three songs. And the first two, uh, one of them is 11 and a half, and the other one's 10 minutes long. Um, you know, I changed my mind on the whole long song thing after Dream Theater. Really? Yeah, because they can put out 13 minutes, and like I don't know if it's all the same Sh- rhythm Shudu, and shit. Nile, come on. It's been like this. Uh, but yeah, I I'm used to like fucking where, uh, not asking where the fucking chorus is. Basically, it's just the fucking opening verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, end. And like you don't get that from bands like Volumes, Meshuggah. No, you don't. And I'm saying it's well, and that that's the beauty of it, man. And I love that. Like, um, and and I think that actually fits over into any music because mm-hmm. there's a I, like I I'm not a I'm not a, you know, I, I I didn't go to school for it. I can't read sheet music or, or study music in the way that a normal you can feel it, normal though. person was. I feel it emotionally, and I don't think that it like there's. I don't feel like there should be a requirement for how a song should sound. Like if you can make something that's entertaining to people and to yourself that you enjoy to play, then I think Dope Step is the perfect example of that. Yeah, sure. I've listened to maybe like ten minutes of that ever, and I absolutely am judge what something on it. I think it's crap. That's my opinion. Mm. I don't. I don't You're like it. You're being judged How much acid have you eaten? Have you, are you being judged? How much ju- what? Acid have you eaten? I've eaten no acid. No That's acid. That's why you don't understand. Okay. I, then I'm I accept it. I'm not saying it. it's if I have, I'm not saying it, it is. But I understand now. I'm just saying in my opinion it, it is. It serves a purpose. I'm just saying in my opinion it is. And if I have to go eat acid to try to enjoy it, then you guys can just keep all that. I will. All of it. All, all of, of it. it. Y'all can have I it all. mine. If I had Anyways. a little more to give you, I would. I just don't want to hear anybody else being... Non judged up step will. <laughs> That's the, 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 the turn off yeah. show or some shit. I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't like. I, it's not that I, I. I don't like to. I really don't like to try to. Like, with the non judgmental mission, I'm trying not to just vigorously shit on anything I don't like. It, but it's so easy to do because yeah. you hear something that irritates you and you immediately just go, well, I could try to like it. But it fucking sucks. Oh. So I just don't want to. It's just like Bruno Mars. Shit! <laughs> it's just like Tourette's, you know, sometimes you can't hold It's it not back. his fault that he thinks you're amazing. <laughs> I am. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stupid. That's Give good. Me. Yeah, but like, um, sometimes you just can't help it, man. But like, part of my non judgmental mission is to enjoy things that typically I, I look at the album cover or I look at a song title and I go, mm. I kind of wave it off and go, I'm going to go back to this. So hopefully I can, I can get, um, you guys, Devil Driver, that band. You guys have listened to them. I know yeah, you have. Definitely. Are Hold you back fans? The day. Hold back the day. I mean, it, That's it's, how long it's, it's a that. more metal version of Cold Chamber. I've never liked them. Well, what? I mean, do you like? Did you like Cold Chamber? Yes. Here's the deal. Here's what really? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to explain this to you. Yeah, this is what I've tried to tell this to people for many years. I have no good reason not to like them. Then, then get out. I have none. I, I can't give you a good one. There are a handful of bands out there. Them, um, um, another early uh, 2001 that was real popular, Children of Bodom. Children of Bodom. You remember those guys? Mm-hmm. Not really. I don't. If we could sit down and someone goes, hey, I'm a fan of them. You, you, never, you don't like them? Uh, you never heard this song? No, I've never heard it. They'll play that song for me. I'll sit there and listen to it on the stereo and be like, well, holy fucking shit, this kicks ass. I, I haven't heard this. No, right. whoa. But then I'll go and I'll go buy an album. Or even that album, and I can't find that experience again. It's like, you know, it's kind of hollow. Like, like no matter what I do, close to it, but it just it just tickles you and it doesn't actually grab you. No, like to that me, I don't me. like it. I don't like it afterwards. I don't know what it is. Devil Driver is one of those bands as well. Hold like, back. Like if I come today. over here, yeah, I guarantee if you play that song for me right now before I leave, I'm gonna love it. Yeah. But then I'll go home and I'll I'll, uh, I'll purchase it off uh, Amazon or and something. Just shit on it. And then I'll just be face. like, I don't like that. I just don't want to listen to this. Mm. I don't know why it happens. It's a handful of bands that it happens to me with. Man, but um, I think that been, I'm they, gonna force myself. I'm gonna been, down. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna download another record. I'm gonna pick one at random with mm. no one letting me hear anything first, and I'm gonna try it out. Devil Driver's been weekend warriors and shit for the past twenty years. So they gotta get some fucking respect for that. No, I'm not disrespecting. Okay. I just for some reason like. Like I've seen them. Half my friends are like, man, uh, they, they, these guys got a new record. And I'll be like, I just kind of don't care because I've never enjoyed it. And I hate to say that, but maybe I need to. I did it with the event Sevenfold, and I had to shove a whole bunch of crow right in my mouth. Hey, no, you didn't because it was still a five, I think, overall, in my idea. Because, like, yeah, you can give it an eight. And I think you put it in, like, Slayer, 
Metallica and Guns N' Roses. Yeah, I'm it just like, seemed kind of like it was That's all a fucking size 19, 19 shoe right there. And I felt like Avenged Sevenfold. Well, I didn't say it was the best parts of it, but I was saying for what I thought that mm. they sounded like from skipping over all their stuff because I every time I thought I heard them, I thought it was garbage. When I put on an album, I found myself enjoying it. And they kind of taught me that, all right, what else in the past decade have I been a closed-minded little shit about and just not given... You know, maybe I did it with the Devil Driver. Maybe I did it with the the the, the Bodom, or maybe I've done it with a hundred other bands that I've just said, nah, not today. What if that day, Leo, when you let me hear Gojira for the first time, and I absolutely mm, fell in love right. with Yama's Messengers, man, mm. and, uh, and and I went I went crazy. No, it wasn't that one. It was a uh, Mars Series. It was a uh, uh, opening for Mars Series. Ocean Planet. It's my all time favorite song by this. John Wells. Is that the same album. That album. That, that album. Yeah, but right. the opening song on that album, Ocean Planet, it's my all time favorite Gojira song. <laughs> I like the acts, dude. I love I love everything they've done. Right. But if imagine if when you let me hear that, I just would have been in a different mood that day, yeah, no. and it wouldn't have hit me right. I, I never. I might not have seen them three times by now. I might not I have saw. I can't, I can't take credit for Gojira being right. fucking great, though. <laughs> no, um, I can't take credit for Going that. Going back to the Lamb of God concert, I think I still to this day think Gojira was there opening for him. To this day, because you seen them. Well, there was a big dude. He was like a big, long, fucking haired dude. They're not big huge, guys. But he had these big boots and shit, and like he came out and sung a song with Rand, Randy Blythe. Did he sound French? Of course. <laughs> I didn't know it. Like the first, the band that played right before Lamb of God, I didn't fucking guess their name Check, or whatever. Um, I think they did it, tour together. They did. I'm well, they you. did. They did because I saw them with Metallica in two thousand nine. But I know that Gojira. Well, were one, they were introduced kind of to the states through Lamb of God. Right. And Randy was a big fan. It was a long time back. I think it was yeah. when Sacrament dropped yeah, around got, that around that era. Around but they'd already Randy. had they'd already had a, a few a couple albums before that. Gojira had been around since the mid nineties. Across the barn. Oh yeah, dude. Okay. Across, yeah, they got a couple of albums that are just straight death metal, like their in early French. stuff. Oh man, Is no, it in I, French? I don't pretty, know. Pretty sure it's English. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because their name was Godzilla. And they had to change it legally to Gojira, which you know is the Japanese word for Godzilla. That's fucking incredible. Yeah. Is it the Japanese word for Godzilla, or is it just the fact that they're like Gojira, Gojira? That's, that's what it sounds like when Japanese people no, say Godzilla. No, it actually is the translation. It's fucked up. They, well, no, that's why people like you think it's it fucked a, up is because they're actually yelling the translation for Godzilla, and y'all just think they're saying it's bad poorly, but they're not. They're actually. They don't remind me of a Godzilla though. Like yeah. Gojira doesn't doesn't strike me as this big fucking spiked. I don't lizard. know why they named it that. I mean, I guess it's just because they were huge fans. I mean, I think it was because yeah. I named my cat Ozymandias because I love the Watchmen. I don't know when you can make shit like flying whales or whatever. I, I named my dog Leo because he was a Leo. My parents named my dog <laughs> Moses, okay. and that was kind of sad because he was the only. You know what I'm saying? Pup of the litter that actually survived going across the road near science for all times. Huh. Real sad. Had worms and shit, but that is an entire different story. Back to the show. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, like like I said, man, I just wanted to talk about those new releases yeah, and what's going on. Um, some of that stuff is just incredible. Um, we are also at the 20th anniversary of when they made Ozfest a annual tour. Instead of just, you know, because like they did it in '96, and then I think like after that they were like, "Well, let's go yearly with it." And I was just looking back, man. I was actually looking back at some of these these lineups from that year, and uh, it's just so cool to look back at this stuff real quick. The the to uh, that was just such a great album. album. Woodstock '99, the two disc set, Red and Blue. You can call it what you want, but it seemed like they took the best of every single person that was on that. Oh, oh the, the 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 double disc one on that. Yeah. One? Yeah, yeah, like, um... That was one of those albums that, like, yo, I stayed in my car for a little bit. Festivals give you a lot, man. They give mm -hmm. you a lot to go with. But, mm -hmm. like like I said, I was checking out this OzFest 97 since right. I figured it was kind of cool. It was 20 years since they turned that into an annual thing. And it really made me go back and look. I was just looking at the lineups for the ones that I'd been to. And uh, I went to look at the 97 one, man, and check this check this out. Uh, you had Pantera and Black Sabbath uh, and Manson and Typo Negative and Fear Factory and Machine Head. All on the same stage, like you know. So you um, like Machine Head, but you don't like Devil Driver. 
Yeah, I love Machine Head. Machine Head's been around a lot longer. He said he liked Cold need, Chamber no, too. Like to maybe, maybe, maybe he just feels that. Dez should have just stuck with Cold Chamber. You no, I no, because I did. I only liked the first Cold Chamber know. record and a few songs off the second one. I didn't like that Dark Days maybe or anything. You just I like don't that like Robo song. No, I think he has a pretty interesting voice. Yeah, I loved what he did on that. Uh, 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 and we'll talk about it when we do our collaborations deal. But right. the Roadrunner United, I love Des on that oh. one, man. Mm-hmm. It was killer on that. That was a life changing album, right yeah, there. Absolutely, totally. straight up, dude. It's great. Um, yeah, I have no problem with him. Like, I think he sounds great, dude. I like that Robo song off the Darkest Day, Dark Days right. or whatever, Cold Chamber. I just wasn't a fan really of a lot of their stuff afterwards. It's just those albums never hit me, or I was in a certain mood, and I guess I got a stigma about them, and I thought, no. No. Ah, before we wrap up, that was the metal homework that I'd given you. I think I forgot to. More things change, Machine Head. I'm going to check it out, but I'm going to tell you this right now about Devil Driver. I've seen them on a YouTube video before, right? And they're talking about their tours, and they're telling people, like, we want kids to come in with their parents and shit because metal needs to be universal. They don't try to fucking make it so fucking brutal and violent and, you know what I'm saying, walls of death and shit. I gotta respect that because that's just bringing metal to the forefront. And if you ain't heard, hold back the day. You need to look that up. Last Absolutely. time. Absolutely. I will check it out. That is my metal homework for the week. Check out that machine head. The more things change, because I was, I, I went back and was looking at this Ozfest lineup, and it, it it's kind of like these things reading on here are where I'm getting my inspiration for some of this older stuff. Right. Uh, I know that we're gonna talk about rap metal coming up because a lot of people got to give a lot of shit. I, I, I don't, and I know that you don't. Um, do you right. remember a band called Downset? A decent rap metal band from the uh, uh, late 90s. Check those guys out. We were talking about Cold Chamber. They were on that Ozfest I was just talking about. It's just it's cool to look back at these things, and that's caused me to go back and check some albums out that I felt like I was missing or check out albums I was missing. So that's what I encourage this week. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to suck it up and listen to that Devil Driver, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to have something constructive to say about it next week. Right. And you got to check out that more things change by machine. Absolutely, head. that's already Absolutely. on my agenda. But I'm telling you right now. Fuck, I forgot. Damn it. I'm sorry. Come in next week to find out what was on his mind right yeah. now. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Non-judgmental podcast. This has been Non-judgmental podcast. Make sure you subscribe, like our page, Facebook, and a comment. Right now, feedback, feedback. Metal fucking homework. Metal homework. Here's metal homework. Who's the next holiday? Not metal, but I mean, you're definitely you're starting to point like, what, what the heck? Who are they going to do? You know? Anybody can pass on, and apparently, like, there's a way to, you know. I, I don't know, man. I, 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 at the same time, as we say that, I would hate to see that.